The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. So I have gone through a lot of revivals, a lot of healing services. I've been plopped, dropped, flopped, flipped, everything you, you know, dropped, everything you can think of. And so healing service was the last thing I wanted to go to. After a devastating car crash, Delia Knox spent 22 years in a wheelchair. Then God performed a miracle in her life. The power of God came in that room in such a mighty way that I yes. immediately arose from that chair. Alabama area, Delia and Bishop Levy Knox. Would you welcome them to life today? I saw, I saw him dancing with you, and you were dancing like an angel, and you had been in the wheelchair, paralyzed, quadriplegic. How? How long? Or paraplegic? How long? 22 and a half years. What happened to put you there? I was struck by a drunken driver. Mm -hmm. 22 and a half years, I was uh, confined to a wheelchair, living life as a paraplegic. Mm -hmm. And God just uh, amazingly changed, transformed my life. I have to say that it was 22 and a half years of, of, of just hoping. But um, I have to say, Bishop Levy Knox came into my life uh, well into the middle of it. Uh, we were married nine years before the miraculous move of God in my life. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey how God has brought Bishop Knox into my life because he has been teaching me the word of God. And you have to understand, I was serving the Lord already. And so I have gone through a lot of revivals, a lot of healing services. I've been plopped, dropped, flopped, flipped, everything you, you, know, drop, everything you can think of. And so healing service was the last thing I wanted to go to. Um, a healing, a miracle service is the last thing I would, I would try to stay away from those areas because I had gone through 22 years of such, such altar calls. And, mm -hmm. and so when I married Bishop Knox, Bishop Knox says, I was at, well, he told me I would never have to live those experiences again. Mm -hmm. Our dear friend, Apostle John Kilpatrick, was in conversation with Bishop Knox, and Bishop shared a word to him over his life and shared a word. And, and Apostle John Kilpatrick asked him if he would share that that night at some special services he was having that evening. And so Bishop and I, I of course, went to support my husband. Mm. And when I went, lo and behold, they're having a healing revival. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. Well, you got to understand, now you know, uh, if, if you know anything about John Kilpatrick, he, the Lord just, he has an anointing for revivals, you know, for the move of God. But if you would have told me I was going to a revival, I would have been probably like, oh, I don't think so. And so, but he, Bishop, when he brought the word forth that there was the winds of God were changing, that something that the God is blowing in, in a certain direction. Well, I'm there sitting there rooting my husband on, rooting him on there. And, um, and then after he brings the word forth, the evangelist that went up, they introduced the evangelist, evangelist Nathan Morris, and he uh, comes up and then he says, Bishop, is this your wife? And of course, I'm sitting up front with him. And he begins to say, will you bring her forth? Well, here's this moment Bishop promised me I would never have to experience. <laughs> and I'm sitting there saying to myself, oh, Lord, here we go. And he goes, will you bring her forward? God's about to do something tonight. And I'm like, okay, oh, gosh, here we go. And so Bishop brought me forward. We both went forward, and he was standing right by my side. And I knew I could feel comfortable and insecure with my husband as my covering right there. And so as I stood, as I sat there and he stood right by my side, I sensed the spirit of God doing something so miraculously. Now, I have to say it was miraculous in that just, just prior to that, a child had come forth for healing. Mm -hmm. A parent brought a child over, a baby, an infant over for healing. And the Lord began to just melt my heart there for the healing of this baby. Mm -hmm. While I was sitting there in that moment right after that, evangelist Nathan said, 
is this your wife, Bishop? Can you bring her forward? As he brought me forward, I went forward, and I, my heart was already in the healing for that child. Mm -hmm. And so as I sat there, I sat there as he was praying. He, I, I was very, it was very, I was very careful with the words that he used over my life because if there's one thing I know, I want to know what you're praying over me for. Sure. And so, and if you would have asked me back then, I, I lived my life where I got to the point where I said, anybody would come to me and ask me, can I pray for you for your healing? I would immediately respond with, well, what makes you think I'm sick? Mm -hmm. And um, because I, I didn't want to go through what they saw through their, because I was in my wheelchair, but I was serving the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believed in God, believed in the mighty power of God. I would worship. I would lead worship in my wheelchair. I would do so much. And, 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 and so when somebody tells me they want to pray for my so healing, I, that, I, that, I didn't want to yeah. be flopped, flopped, tropped yeah. and all that. Now, you know, it's like, Yes, I had accepted that just just about mm -hmm. because I was sitting there and I was like, well, what are you going to pray healing for? What exactly makes you think I'm sick? Now, Evangelist Nathan Morris never asked that, but he said something very particular in his in his mess in his uh, prayer. He said, "Let faith arise in this woman of God." Now, being married to Bishop Knox, you have to know that he is a man of the word, and he had been just. I, I, he had been preaching the word and teaching the word on a special series at that time since 2007. He had been teaching the revelation of the I am. Very incredible revelation. And as he would teach that to me, and, and, and I would glean from that, he would teach and he would say, you have to move from the 11th chapter of faith in the 11th chapter of Hebrews to 12th grade faith. Now, to me, that didn't mean much. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there like, I don't know what you mean. He goes, well, you got to move. You got to graduate to the 12th grade. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> but that night, as I'm sitting there, all I could think mm -hmm. is, is the words that were coming forth, those words that were coming forth in prayer, let faith arise in this woman of God. I sat there and immediately those words, the 11th grade to 12th grade faith came alive because the revelation of the I am that I had been receiving and gleaning from my husband came so to life because he would always teach and he says it best about the I am and uh, the I am, uh, anything you add to the I am you become and, you, and, and he just kept teaching that and, and that kept going in my spirit in that moment when he would say, let faith arise in this woman of God. I immediately went to the 12th chapter of Hebrews where it says, I am the author and finisher of your faith. So it was no longer, no, no longer mm -hmm. that I don't have any more faith. And the reason why the, I'm not healed or the manifestation of healing is not occurring is because I don't have faith. If he is the author and finisher of my faith, mm -hmm. it's going to take him to do this because he writes it out. Mm -hmm. And so immediately I just started to think, I started in my spirit, I was like, Father, it's not Delia who is going to rise from this wheelchair. It is the, it is the I am. I am healed. I am whole. I am that I am. I am the author and finisher of your faith. And I immediately began to, to take that on, that, that persona of the I am where the I am would rise within me. And little did I know I would rock the I am back and forth, back and forth and rock that I am. I am healed. I am whole. I am what God says that I am. And immediately I just rocked myself out of that wheelchair and then fell. But in that moment, after 22 and a half years, I rose from that chair for a second. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. And it, it is so, it, it, it is, it, something happened in that moment because I was hearing voices. And the voices that I was hearing was like, this isn't really happening. This is in my mind. Uh, you're not really feeling your legs. Uh, all these thoughts were going through my mind. Not voices, but thoughts, you know, and I don't want to make you feel creepy or anything, but <laughs> thoughts would go through my yeah. mind. And um, I was sitting here, and then I, I and, but a righteous anger, when I got up for that one moment and felt a righteous anger rose up within me. Mm -hmm. 
and rose up within me in such a way that I just knew, I said, I am that I am. And I just, as they kept saying, what do you feel? I said, just worship, because I had to shut down these thoughts. I had said, just worship. God has a way of reaching us in the midst of worship that will transform you from that position into the heavenlies, where the heavenlies and earth comes together right in the earthen vessels that we are. And it was so powerful what I had sensed. It was like it was no longer I, but it, me, but it was the I am rising up. And immediately I began to worship and worship to the point where not once did the evangelists say, get up in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Not once did he try to pull me off the chair, out of the chair, or try to lift me out of the chair or anything like that. But instead, the power of God came in that room in such a mighty way yes. that I yes. immediately arose from that chair. And I knew it was the power of God. And my husband was standing right next to me where it was, we were both believing. And we knew right there and then I really could sense that I had graduated from the 11th chapter of faith to the 12th chapter of faith, where it went from now is, now faith is, now faith is. And it's amazing the way Bishop says it because he always says faith is in between two present terms. Now is. And he's always was telling me it's about present truth faith. Stand up right now. Just stand. Show him how you can stand. This can you move God. easily? This is God. This is God. This is you God. can dance. I can dance. I can dance. Bishop, Bishop. How many years has she been out of the wheelchair now? Well, actually it was 2010 mm -hmm. where the miracle took place in Mobile Convention Center, Man. Mobile. And, uh, and so here we are now, six years. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And uh, so uh, the miracle itself, I really believe that one of the frustrations in the body of Christ and the believers that I've seen is that we're trying to get in a room that we're already in. Mm. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as long as you postpone something into the future, you cannot appropriate it in it now. Mm -hmm. If you postpone your healing into the future, then you cannot appropriate the healing now. Same as the kingdom of God. We know the kingdom of God is past, present, and future. But there's a present reality of the kingdom when the power of God comes, which is a manifestation of God's kingdom. And so what we saw, this, the miracle, is that we saw God sovereignly, supernaturally intervene where the kingdom of God came into this time-space world and raised Delhi up out of the wheelchair by the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. And as we were standing there uh, next to Delhi, and I can sense the surge of like, whew, it was a surge of the power of God. And I felt that. When she began to move and, and come up out of the wheelchair, I knew that God was doing something so miraculously. And I really believe that right now, Brother James, that we are in a season that we're going to begin to see a resurgence mm. of miracles and signs and wonders like we've never seen I before when the body of Christ comes together because we're in an atmosphere of unity, an and atmosphere of love. And it won't be because of some healers, but the That's healer right. the healer right. on his people right. doing what he does. Yes. Mm. Do you believe, and let me just say, where you are and right here, you may say, God, you know, there's something that needs to happen. Let's appropriate that. Yeah. Right where you are, I do believe there are people being healed right where you are all around the world who couldn't stand. You're going to stand. Some mm. of you will fall before mm. your Lord and your face and your carpet of your den or on the hardwood floor mm. or wherever you are, maybe a hotel room, doesn't matter. God, I want to stand up a new person. I want you to pray because people have seen glimpses while you were talking of what was happening. And they have actually seen you dancing as they look at it all over the world. Mm -hmm. And you've just said a profound truth there. Mm -hmm. The healing and the healer is here in his body. Right. And if his body will do one of the things I think is so important, and that's get connected with the Father's heart. Yes. Doing the Father's will. Yes. And living like his family and like the body of Christ that looks like Jesus. Then we're going to see the miracles that Jesus does through his body right. yielded to him. You agree yes, with that? Yes, I agree. Would you just pray? Mm -hmm right now for people all over the world and in this studio that want the touch of God right yes. now in their life. Would you yes. do that? Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we thank you for the miraculous power of your yes. spirit, even tonight, mm -hmm. as we share concerning mm -hmm. your divine intervention in Delia's life, the raising her up out of the wheelchair after being in the wheelchair for 22 and a half years. 
atrophy has set in. There's muscles have gone. But the creative power of your spirit raised her up yes. and gave her the miracle and restored her mobility. And now we thank you, Father, the same faith, the faith yes. in you. We put our faith in you and those that are watching this telecast right now. We, we thank you, Lord, that the sovereign move of your Holy Spirit and your power intervened. We pray for divine intervention yes. by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the miraculous, that the kingdom of heaven has arrived. Oh, yes, the Lord. kingdom of heaven has arrived. And now, Lord, it is time that we declare and decree healing yes. in their bodies right yes. now. We command healing, wholeness, yes. well-being, the miracles of God be released in their lives and those that have been believing and trusting you. Father God, we thank you that let faith arise in their hearts yes. and may they connect with the supernatural power of your spirit yes. and we decree you sent your word and you heal them and deliver them from all destruction in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you Amen. just applaud the Amen. greatness of God? Amen. Thank you. He is the same.